Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where this week we go, let's do animation. Yes. We're not doing any animation. We're going to talk about an animation. But I have this flip book ready. Let's see it. Let's Crap. Talk Put it yeah, away. Nothing, but he's ho- ho- Burn ho- it. He's with his family. Burn it in his, front of his, me. His family and then he's, oh, he's having a nice picnic <laughs> in this little flip book. I decided to go against action and they're just having a nice time. Uh, if everyone could leave a like this week because we are talking about in particular a couple of episodes of the 1990s animated Iron Man televisual series. I forgot this existed, but I, I know, I, right? I de- I'm sure I saw some of it yeah. as, uh, in that year. I was, a, I was a, James, let me tell you, I was a mad Iron Man fan back in the day. Pre-movies, can you imagine, when he was just a garbage character <laughs> <laughs> with his stupid little moustache <laughs> and his mullet and et cetera. And et cetera, when yeah. He had his, when he had his second-rate home brand Avengers team called Force Works. Oh, my God, I do want to talk about... All of that. Mm. But before we do, I'd like to talk about the origins of this, right? Please. So off the back of Batman the Animated Series, Mm. everybody was looking for that. Scrambling. Exactly. Marvel had a massive hit with the X-Men Animated Series. Yes. Which is coming back, baby. Which is coming back. And what's good about that series in particular was that it managed to tell a long-form story. Yeah. And it took a lot of the elements from the comics. You know, we're doing Dark Phoenix Saga, we're doing uh, Days of Future Past, yeah. whatever. They did all these different things, and then they thought, what if we did Iron Man, but just sort of half assed yeah. that element of this? We don't have any plot elements. Could we just do Masters of the Universe, <laughs> but it's Iron Man? Yeah, well, why it's not? funny you should say that, because that is exactly what they were aiming for. That because was- it is... It is Instead of Skeletor trying to constantly get into Castle Greyskull to yeah. get the magic within, mm. it's the Mandarin, and he's always attempting to break into Stark Enterprises so they can for the get magic within, for the magic within, and <laughs> and and the alcohol probably, probably yeah, <laughs> that's right. Now we're looking at two episodes today, uh, both of which feature Hawkeye because. Hawkeye show, I guess. Episode one, the defecation of Hawkeye. I'm assuming I read that correctly, right? <laughs> Close enough. Just 22 minutes of him struggling on the loo <laughs> in between breakfast cereal commercials. Uh, it's the defection of Hawkeye. Oh, I see uh, what's happened. In stereo, where available. Mm. And then in season two, and I want to talk about the changes between the, the two seasons, we look at um, another episode called Something Something Iron Man Shrinks and Goes Inside Hawkeye Iron or whatever. Iron Man's a little shrinky dink, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So what, what I think's uh, interesting about this is that they do try to bring in force works like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So we've got, let's name some characters. I've written them down. I can't oh, do okay. them off the top Spider of my head. Spider Woman. Yep. The, um, the Julia Carpenter version. Pepper Potts out the door, mate. Pepper Potts out the door. So they're like, well, another redhead. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got, uh, we got Scarlet Witch is in there. Yep being especially Russian or wherever she's from in this mm-hmm, universe. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get US agent for some reason, so yeah, Hawkeye's weird. in this instead. Yep. And War Machine is in this. Mm-hmm. And Century, who's a who's an alien yeah. robot from a from another planet or something. Why does he look like that? He could look like anything. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> He's got a teleporting halberd situation. He's got magic or technology. Yeah. He's got a hundred different personalities, but I don't think they bring that into the cartoon or anything. And instead of... Uh, they gave him no personality. That's exactly right. Instead of Jarvis or Friday, Iron Man's home computer is Homer. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Mm. Which is more of a season two thing. So they're going up against whatever version of the Mandarin this is supposed to be. Uh, to avoid racial tensions... He's green. He's a green alien man of sorts. There is an origin story where he goes into a cave and touches a big gem and now he's like, I'm a green man. I'm mm. a green man, everybody. Everybody look at me. Before I was a man of indeterminate race and now I'm green. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the origin, it says, um, in touching the crystal and, and getting the rings or whatever, it grew my strength and intellect uh, till it became incalculable. Disagree. <laughs> uh, all of this is very calculable. I would yes. say he's in the probably, maybe the high 90s in terms of <laughs> in intellect. In terms of IQ, sure, right. <laughs> Not that IQ was ever really a proper thing. You sure, know what I mean, anyway. but if it were, he'd be below average. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got his he's got a like an assortment of uh miscellaneous oh, bad I love guys. Modoc, uh yep. Black Lash, yep. Blizzard, Grey Gargoyle, Grey yep, Gargoyle, Blizzard. and Hypnosia, who I think was made up for, New this, for this series, I think. Uh, you're forgetting both Dread Knight and Whirlwind. Oh yeah, that's great. I mean I would have also forgot that, but I but I wrote them down because I knew I'd immediately forget. And at one point in this in the first episode, mm. their ba- force works are battling these bad guys, and Spider Woman says, Don't have time for dread and chill. Like, is that it? What, what does that mean? Is that an expression? <laughs> yeah, it's an expression. Is that where Netflix and chill came from? <laughs> That's right. You just sat at home and you dreaded things and you chilled out. <laughs> 
Dread and Chill, I think, yeah. referred to when things used to be blockbuster and you'd be dreading the late fees for that, for oh, that VHS you lost. You're dreading the fact that maybe you forgot to rewind the tape and they're going <laughs> to charge you next time you come in. That's it. So uh, as you mentioned, he's always trying to steal some stuff and this time around he's trying to hijack a shipment of adamantium. But Iron Man is on it. I love the way the suit goes over him when he's in his... That You see that in, like, the helicopter in Civil War. Yeah, you know? it's very much... This is very much the genesis of everything Iron Man owns. Yeah. Has an Iron Man suit in it, just in case he needs one. His, his, his apartment, his bloody car. Yep. Hat stand. Yeah, so it does it all. It's weird because when he flies out of the car, the chair that he was sitting in disappears. I don't know what happens to it. Look, it's neither here nor also, there. Also, what's interesting, uh, obviously, in the, the opening title sequence, which is just... They clearly didn't know what they were doing yet. They're like, what is this? It, it's got this weird chamber orchestra music going going on it's so much there's a lot of pipe organ in this yeah. right and synth yeah yeah again changes in the second season but yeah. also when he unlocks his like briefcase with the iron man suit on it the, hel- the helmet's right at the bottom by the feet <laughs> and it just upset me in a way that i'm i'm, I'm not sure quite how to process <laughs> but then he has to bend down and get it i guess or it slides up his legs in some sort of weird ratchet situation i don't i didn't like it i don't like it i don't <laughs> like it at all uh, but the reason this particular uh, heist goes awry, even though it's fake adamantium or something, it's because Hawkeye doesn't show up. Yeah. And they're like, what is wrong with this guy? He's supposed to be here. He's always late and whatever. And it turns out that he has a secret. And by that, I mean he's got a grandpa that he occasionally visits or secret whatever. grandpa, yeah. But the bad guys... <laughs> we're not going to get caught up in the story too much because I think... It's irrelevant. Everything largely. around this cartoon is better than the cartoon itself in uh-huh. terms of interest. But uh, the bad guys, including Justin Hammer, like hypnotize him and and take photos of of him accepting money. Yes. So it looks like that he's been bribed by the and, bad and guys. And nobody twigs like maybe it's the hypnosis lady <laughs> that we all know exists and we've encountered probably a dozen times before in but, this cartoon that we live in. But what I love is when they they bring him in for questioning. Yes. This is even before like all the hypnosis stuff happens or whatever. They're like, where were you? And he's like, none of your business. I'm a freewheeling guy. Stay out of my business. Fuck you. See you later. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a freewheeling rebel wearing a polo shirt tucked into some big slacks because this is a Marvel cartoon in the 90s. And that's how we all dressed. <laughs> You're not I'm wrong. taking this straight out of the Peter Parker playbook. <laughs> Very true. It's, and then when they finally bring him in and they show him the photos and they give him a real drilling and Rhodey's like, you're lazy and we hate you and you complain too much. Much, but guess what? We know you're cool. We know this is yeah. fake or whatever. So it's like, why did you do that? Why did you say those things? Because of the audience, <laughs> the audience of kids. Also, one of my favorite parts about this first episode we watched is that uh, Spider Woman decides she's going to tail Hawkeye. Oh yeah, but obviously she Hawkeye's a, a master of espionage. He leaves can, that fence like it's right. Man, he's a he's a you, regular man. You, you can't, you know, you can't, you know. He'll know if you're tailing him. So what you do is you dress up the Stark Enterprises flying car as a as a <laughs> as an exterminating ve- exterminator vehicle. Brilliant. Just the, just this amazing future flying car, and you put a roach on the top, and you <laughs> and you ride roach busters on the back. He'll never twig. He can't tell. Oh my God, that exterminator has one of those future cars, Tony Stark. <laughs> Do we live in the future? I don't think so. I think it's 1994. I'm not <laughs> sure, actually. Did Hawkeye in this era, was he known for being, like, aloof and unreliable? Was this a thing that the character was? Yeah, he was more rebellious, I think, because he started out as a criminal. I don't know if you're yeah, aware yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense, I mm. guess. But you're just so enraptured by the Jeremy Renner version that you think he's always just a super cool super spy. And it's always, always Christmas or whatever. Mm, that's right, yeah. yeah. You might be right. I do want to jump over to our uh, season two, though. Okay. So you're probably not going to be surprised, but the minds behind this, two of them are Avi Arad and Ike Perlmutter. Oh, the dream team. <laughs> the dynamic duo. Not the only people involved, obviously. Two guys who suck. <laughs> and they realised, well, not just them, but the ratings and reviews made them realise that they are stretching themselves too thin for this and the quality of animation and storytelling wasn't quite there. So they disbanded Force Works because they were like, there's too many people in this. We're going to have kind of more of an ongoing story in season two. But obviously the biggest change for the second season is... It got really metal. Yes, it and did. And he grew a, and Tony the Stark mullet. grew a mullet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So there's actually... But the last one, again, like they had this weird pipe organ intro, but this new one's all like... Clang! Clang! Are you mad? Pretty good, I thought. I Way think they're improved. both bad. <laughs> I thought I liked, the, I liked the second one a lot. Yeah, it's a little bit better. And actually, it's funny because they gave him a mullet, apparently, to distinguish him from Bruce Wayne. 
They're like, Bruce Wayne's a square. He's a nerd. Look at this yeah, guy. Yeah. He doesn't even have a mustache. Sure. <laughs> no. Yeah. And speaking of Bruce Wayne, uh, Coco Enterprises, who animated Batman, the animated series, stepped into this. And yeah, you're right. The intro is much better. I've, uh, I've sold it short here. But I still think, regardless of all of that, this is not a patch on Batman, the animated series. It's not a patch on X-Men. It's not a patch on the Spider-Man series, which was going at the same time. Better than Inspector Gadget? Yes. Everything's better than Inspector Gadget, except the movie Inspector Gadget. It's way worse than <laughs> Inspector Gadget. How'd they do it? I don't know how they did it. So in this one, uh, look again, we've kind of, we've just picked Hawkeye episodes, but it we're, doesn't we're matter. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel. He doesn't have a lot of expanded media, really. <laughs> yeah, in this one. Well, look, to be fair, it was either this or play the Hawkeye expansion on that Avengers video game, mm. which I finally bought and I played the expansion and I just went, I just don't like this enough. Or not even. This isn't interesting enough. I think mechanically... So this cartoon is better than the Hawkeye expansion. I don't even know that, but look, I think mechanically very solid, but it's just there's so much bullshit packed into that game mm. that you, you just to get through to just like playing a level mm. and playing an interesting mission where you're not just fighting robots, mm -hmm. which is every mission, is impossible. Okay, but does he have some great little outfits? Yeah, probably. But you probably have nice. to pay for them and whatever because, again, mm. there's a fucking metric ton of bullshit all over That's that true. game. And I know the people who made that game, look, fine, we're here. I'll talk about it. <laughs> okay. But the people behind that game are like, we're not sure why this failed. Why didn't people like it? Because you choked it in garbage. And you gave it to a company who made the Tomb Raider games who were very good at making like linear-ish mm -hmm. single-player narratives. And you just went, let's just blow this out into a big pile of crap. Why don't people like this big pile of crap that we made? What's wrong with it? We put an Avengers logo on this big pile of crap. We thought that was printing money. It didn't work somehow. <laughs> So there you go. Anyway, yeah. that's my review of that terrible fucking game. But anyway, in this episode, yep. uh, uh, Hawkeye gets uh, gets injured, gravely injured, and he's probably going to die. A plane falls on him. A <laughs> plane does fall on him. Ultimo throws a plane well, on actually, him or something. A lot, of, a, lot, a lot seems to have happened in between the first season and the second season. First of all, it seems like Spider-Woman is, is now in love with, with Iron Man. Sure. But he's like, that would be an inappropriate workplace relationship, which is probably the first time he's ever said that. And then also... He's just saying it because the kids are watching. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, good point. <laughs> And then, and then again, Force Works broke up, and they're all like, "We don't, we, we all hate you, I hate you, Iron Man, or whatever." So we hate Ike Pearl. We mean Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Iron Man is on the outs with Hawkeye, but Hawkeye yep. saves him from a big robot. Yep. And then, uh, then he's the a plane, plane falls, falls on, on him, <laughs> and then Iron Man's like, "Well, I'm, I gotta save him. So the only way to save him is to." shrink down real small and go into his uh, body. It becomes a magic school bus episode, it doesn't sure it? It sure does, yeah. <laughs> but I guess the difference here being you're not really learning anything, no. which quite frankly is my favourite type of children's television. Yes. Where you don't learn a goddamn thing. If anything, thing. Uh, children watching this will probably come away with a lot of lessons about how the human body doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. and they'll... You could fix a spine with a man who shrinks down with a magic weapon or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Um, I also like so the, the villain who's controlling Ultimo. We don't find out till the very end who it is, who this mysterious character is. It's the hacker. Mm -hmm. uh, just some nerd, it turns out. But it's interesting because they show that he's like a bad boy and on the edge because at one point you see a Howard Stern poster. Yes, you do. <laughs> in his bedroom, uh, which I love. Um, and also it, it's at this point in the series where his suit can just do whatever. He can just turn into all the other suits. Yeah. And, and therefore all the other action figures. So, of, Funny of you course, mention that. Yeah. So of course, you know, if you don't buy all the action figures, how are you going to play along yeah. with, with the cartoon? With this show that you don't like, That's how are you going right. to play along with it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, now you could probably buy the whole set for like four bucks on eBay, but still. I don't know about that because, okay, uh, this is part of the reason why the show was cancelled because the toys were quite costly to make, but at the same time were not very popular. And dangerous. And dangerous. So they had a lot of like bits that would like clip onto them. There were multiple mm. Iron Man suits. Like the quality of them, if you see them, and here they are. Uh, ben and Lawrence put them in. Well done. Whoa. Yeah. In a little flip book form. <laughs> no. But like no one's like, oh man, I want the grey gargoyle action figure. No. You know? Mm. It's nonsense. Anyway, he... He gets, he fixes his back and whatever. But when then, I'm, but then Ultimo, the giant robot, also shrinks down into. Oh yeah, yeah, that. It's like um, Inner Space. It turns yeah. into the movie Inner Space, mm -hmm. and then they sort of become friends, but not really. Iron Man just fires off some X rays in in the Hawkeye's brain. At yeah, yeah, that's point. fine. That's fine. He's like, this will be fine, will it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but anyway, they become friends and whatever. But what I do think is interesting about this that all the animated Marvel series from the '90s, it is one 
big universe. Oh. Uh, Panels to Pixels uh, did a really good video of this, how this was kind of like the first Marvel kind of shared universe across like multiple years because Iron Man does make an appearance with the same voice actor in like The Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four and these shows kind of go on, you know, and they ends up being, there's like a future-ish Marvel show, if you remember. Ah, oh, future-ish Marvel show. Future-ish Marvel show. That's good fun. <laughs> Welcome to the future-ish, <laughs> I would say, at the start of every episode. So, yeah, I think it did a, it did a good job of existing, but nice, beyond that... perfect. And, wow. But beyond that, there is not really much here on offer which you couldn't get in better shows, even from Marvel. Or in a comic book. Or in, the comic, or in a comic book at the same time, exactly. So, all in all, it's not great, is it? Not really, but it's all on Disney+, Plus. so if you want to check it out. That's right, just, just like we did. It's you don't have to wait for somebody to upload every episode to YouTube and then they all get taken down. <laughs> and they're again. in 360p and, yeah, and yeah. whatever. A uh, question for everybody though, do you want us to come back to this at some point? Because they do cover like popular storylines. They do Armor Wars. There's an episode with Bill Clinton in it. Do you know what I mean? Does it, he play the saxophone? <laughs> I don't think, I think he just picks up a phone. He's like, I'm Bill Clinton. I'm huh? a sex criminal, but I'm never going to jail. Then he puts the phone down. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? They got oh. him to voice it too. He didn't even care. He's it's, like, they'll never get me. I don't care. That's just how he answers the phone <laughs> when you call him. <laughs> but yeah, if there's any particular storylines you'd like us to come back to, or even some of the other animated series, because before we have looked at Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. we've looked at some of the X-Men, but there's a lot of interesting stuff here, I think, in, in this era. That's true. We did some animated Spider-Man stuff even, didn't we? We, we did, did that yeah. Mysterio one we did, or something. We did several episodes about Mysterio, yeah. It was too many, I think. Too many. I don't mind that show. Anyways, this is Caravan of Garbage. We do this every week, and you might wish, you might wish and want and hope that in your heart you could see these early. Uh, and you can, actually. If you head over to bigsandwich.co, it is like our Patreon. If you do want to sign up, there's early videos including these. There's bonus podcasts that we do. There's movie commentaries. We've done some movie commentaries, haven't we? So many Marvel ones, actually. Oh, my actually. God, so many, yeah. Too many, I think. And if enough people sign up, we'll get Tony Stark mullets and mustaches. <laughs> we don't mind. Yeah. We don't mind at all. We'll do it. Anyways, uh, here's a hint towards next week. Now, David Banner faces his greatest trial, the trial of the Incredible Hulk. Also, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that goes up there every week. And if you do like Hawkeye... We're doing Hawkeye recaps here every week, aren't we? Also, oh, it's a Hawkeye bonanza, isn't it? Like, yeah. Lately, it really is. You've, all those all the, those six guys out there who are like, can't wait for <laughs> Hawkeye to take center stage. Well, it is happening right now. Anyways, I'm at Mr Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. See you guys in the next video. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you real soon. Goodbye. 